I want to show you some cool things I've been having fun with on a four equidistant stringed dulcimer tuned D A D D. That's starting on the bass. And if you're interested, this is a dulcimer that was made by Bob McGowan. It's been quite a while. Um, where is it? 2007. It's a neat instrument. So, for equidistant, what do you do with that? Well, one of the first things you can do is you just play melody on the melody string only and let the other strings ring, and that's pretty satisfying. And you can do that with a pick. Um, I tend to favor finger picking on four string, although it's kind of cool with a pick. <laughs> Definitely pretty. Uh, so what else can you do? Well, there's these cool chord shapes from DAD, the three string shapes. And you can take those same exact shapes and put them on here. I take this inside melody string and leave it open the whole time. I'll pluck it, I just don't fret it. So like the L shapes are really pretty. I love that stuff. The slants. Extended. Love that stuff. So some, some of the most fun I have is just moving those three shapes around. So I'll do some L's, some slant, some extended. Also like to um, take those three string shapes and whatever I'm going to do on the bass, I also do that on the inside melody string, the one I just left open. So if you think of the L chords, like a two, two, four, I got two on the bass, two on the middle, four on this outside melody, the one closest to me. I'm just going to double what's ever on the bass. So a two, two, oh, four becomes a two, 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 four. And these are the more traditional, cleaner sounding chords. So a five, five, oh, seven becomes a five, 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 seven. So I just play the three string shapes using bass, middle, and the outside melody. And then for that inside melody, I just double whatever's on the bass. And this works real well. Nice stuff. Um, another cool thing about <clears throat> this is the fact that the two melody strings are the same note. So you can take something where you might play like on this outside melody string. I might play seven, six and a half, five. Well, since they're both the same note, you can play the seven on this string, leave it ringing, play the six and a half on this string, leave it ringing, play the five on this string, leave it ringing. So you kind of alternate, which is a wonderful bell-like way to get some color. And you know, I don't use that constantly, but just a few notes here or there. Like here's an example. I'll just do it to two notes at a time.
Love that stuff. David Schnaufer used to do stuff like um, little three note groups. Another nice thing about these two strings being the same note is the thirds make a lot of sense. <laughs> and every once in a while you make it a fourth. Love that. You bring in the other two strings and it, it can be really gorgeous. Um, some other tricks that are kind of neat. Sometimes I take the three DAD chord shapes that are for three string, the L, slant, and extended, and I put them on the three strings closest to me. And it creates a very dissonant sound sometimes. Not very dissonant but definitely modern and unexpected. It's a little bit of a surprise. Listen to some of that. So sometimes just for like a couple beats, maybe three, maybe four beats, I just take the shapes I know, and I don't even think about what I'm playing. I just stick shapes together, and I get this colorful kind of modern sound, and then I can go back to the normal stuff. You know, well, what's the normal stuff? Well, you can take those three strings, um, bass, middle, and inside melody, and just pretend you have a three-string dulcimer. Ignore the one closest to you. You know? just do a normal dulcimer stuff now and then I'll do a little burst on the three strings closest to me and then back to the three that are farthest from me it's a wonderful way to have like normal and then colorful normal and then colorful and I think it's that back and forth that, that really works the three strings closest to me, you can also work out these chord shapes, and this is kind of a neat trick. The three closest to me, if this was DAD, this would be a slant for a D chord. Well, if you want to hear an actual D chord here, you just swap the middle and inside melody strings. And this actually gives you a D major chord. Let's try that another way. It works with all the shapes. How about an extended slant? An extended slant that would be a G chord. If the three strings closest to me were DAD, which they are not, you would have an O, one, three. That's starting on the middle. Inside melody, outside melody, O, one, three. If you swap the middle and out inside melody, you will get that same chord that you were thinking about. So O, one, three would be a G in D, A, D. If you just swap the middle and inside melody, you get a G. So that's a wonderful little trick for turning any of the three chord shapes into the chord you want. Now, it might not be the voicing, but it's the same chord. So um, how about an L? These are cool because if you do an L for like an A major, four, four, six and a half, if this was D, A, D, that would be an A major. Well, you do it here on the three closest to me, and if you swap the middle and inside melody, guess what? They're the same fret. So the L chords, you know, they come across real well. This is an A L chord, pretty cool. So the slants, when you swap, they work nicely. The extended slants, when you swap that middle with inside melody, they work well also. The advantage to playing on just these three strings, you let the bass drop out of it. You're not gonna pluck it, you're not gonna fret it, and you get this light, clear, higher sound. And because none of these strings are wound, then you don't get that finger noise like you do on the bass. So it's beautiful sometimes just to play these three only, the middle, inside, and outside melody.
I love all that stuff. So with everything I've talked about so far, you know, when you're arranging, when you're improvising, you can just be jumping from one of these ideas to another and it's all pretty darn interesting. One thing I've gotten some good mileage out of is I will play on just the bass, middle, and inside melody. Just be a three string player. And then every once in a while I go to one of these four string approaches just for a little bit and then back to the three. I really enjoy doing that. Three string. And then I do the, uh, the four string just for one chord, back to three. The important thing to understand is just because you got four strings doesn't mean you got to play them all, you know? And just one more string really adds a lot of possibilities to this. I tend to play with my non-thumb stuff when I'm on three string. When I'm on four string, I tend to use the thumb a lot. It just seems to, uh, it really seems to work well, especially because of these nice stretches. Very fruitful, but <laughs> there are some wonderful non-thumb tricks here. This is one of my favorite. Love this voicing. It's an F sharp chord with a flat seven. Uh, and this four could be called an 11. So it's like an F sharp minor 11, but there's no third in it. You can put the third in it. And I love moving that around. There's some really pretty chords where you get the, the like I'll, I'll base this off of E. You get an open fifth, starting on an E, E and B. And then right here, you get the two of the chord. And then right here, you get the three. And this reminds me of fantasy movies. <laughs> I'll go back to B here. Majors are pretty. No, it's just gorgeous stuff. Um, there's more tricks. Look at this shape. This is a good one. Like this is a starting on a B. Think about a B L chord. You know, very often I start with a shape I know in D A D with the three strings, like a five five seven. I'm just doing bass, middle, inside melody. However you like to finger it, five five seven. Uh, and then I start messing with it, and you can just start sticking notes on it. <laughs> so the five five seven, um, I'm going to make it be a five five six and a half, and then this melody string that's closest to me. I'm going to stick a four on there. So this is, this is a B sus two sus, what is it? B sus two with a seven. So I guess you, anyway, that's a pretty shape. Listen to this one. Missed it. And for any of these, if you just start moving that melody string around, you get really pretty stuff. Love all that. I could go on and on about this, but just think, man especially if you do any arranging at all. Go back through this video. Think about all these different things you can do. It's fun. If 
if you've been wanting just a little something different for the Mountain Doll Summer, this is a great thing to do. I've made these videos before, and I guess I'm always just updating you on where I'm at on four string, because I don't tend to do this on stage. I feel like I'm about ready. And there's so many cool books for four string that were put out in the late 70s and the 80s. And there's there's lots of great players. Lorraine Lee Hammond. Um, Bonnie Carroll. Leo Kretzner. Jerry Rockwell. I'm going to leave somebody out. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's different kinds of four string. There's the, the Galax style, which is all the same note. And then there's this. And then there's different tunings. If you made it this far, you might as well check this out. So Janita Baker likes to take this inside melody and run it down to an A, and that produces all kinds of cool results. She also sometimes tunes D, A, A sharp, D, or something like that to get some chromatic stuff. A tuning that I've used quite a bit, I tune this A down to a G. And then the inside melody I tune down to a B doesn't break. That's when they break usually is when you're loosening them. And you know, I didn't even talk about a capo. You put a capo on. So you got four strings, you got a bunch of different tunings, and then you can put a capo on. And, and what I'm always looking for is not the real nerdy stuff I have to study, but the magical stuff that just seems to pop out. So this is interesting because this is like the one, three, five tuning that you make might have run into you. And if you want to hear one, three, five on here, you're going to pluck middle, inside melody, outside melody. That's a one, three, five. But this has the bass, which is the fifth. So you could think of this as five, one, three, five. This one's tuned D, G, B, D. And I think sometimes when I play one, three, five tuning, it just seems like it's a little wanting. And this, this fills it out for me. Um, so I'll just play a little bit in here. I, I love this stuff. I haven't really worked that stuff out yet, but there's so many possibilities. I also love with four string, you can do that alternating bass and it sounds kind of convincing. It takes me a little time to get used to the, you know, when you shift into the new tuning. Uh, one nice trick I like on this, uh, like listen to this five chord. You can use that little uh, rag timey sounded thing. Still trying to remember all these. Uh... Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Um... So, um... check out four string. We don't need to leave it behind. We need to get better at it. Thanks. See you later. Adios.